Hi everybody, welcome to episode 28 of Treehouse Knits. My name is Rachel. Welcome! I am so glad you're here today. I have so much to share with you today. We, it's been a great couple of weeks since the last time we talked. I have some, I have a couple of uh, works in progress, a finished object that I'm wearing right now, and I have just a lot of cool stuff that I wanted to share with you. Many of you have written to me and let me know that you appreciate when I share with you things that I find along the way. And some of you have probably already have heard of this stuff, but in an effort to share and learn together, I wanted to share with you some cool things that have been coming my way or that I've found that I think would be of interest to you. So the kit along, we have all three winners um, have stepped forward. The um, winning items have been claimed. Thank you again for participating in the kit along. We still have the year-long mitten cal that's going on in my podcast page on Ravelry. I hope that you join us. I will be drawing, uh, I think it'll be the next podcast that I will be drawing for our quarterly prizes for the mitten cal. Just head on over to Treehouse Knits podcast on Ravelry. You'll see a thread on that Ravelry page for the mitten along. It's one thread and I will be drawing from, I think it's post 136 and onward for the next one. I have it written down. Um, but join us and you have a great chance of winning something really cool, which I'll share with you on the next episode as well. So join me on that. With the kit along done, I really wanted to do some sort of summer knit along. And I was thinking, I still wanna knit my uh, mittens that I'll be wearing in the winter, but why don't we do something fun? There's so many great mitten patterns that have summer motifs that have flowers on them or birds on them or anything really that uh, makes you feel like summer. And summer's a great time to do some knitting that you can then have as a finished object for the winter. And I thought, well, what could we knit? Let's knit summer into our mittens so that when we come into our cold winter months again, will kind of feel the warmth of summer when we wear them. So I thought to myself, who, I, I really wanted to partner with someone on this particular knit along and I wondered, hmm, who is as knit a mitten obsessed and who is as crazy about knitting as me? And one of the first people that came to mind was Denise of Earth Tones Girl podcast. If you have not watched her podcast yet, I think you'll really enjoy it. If you enjoy my podcast, I have a feeling you'll probably enjoy her podcast as well. I love it. She is definitely a knitter with a capital K, that Denise. She has amazing projects, all different all different types of knitting. She's putting out some really great tutorials. She has a great personality, very energetic, loves, loves, loves the craft, and also travels all around. So I love following her around to a lot of the East Coast knitting um you know, knitting fun, the knitting festivals and such. So I gave her a little shout and she jumped at the chance, which was really cool. So we connected this past week via FaceTime and really had a little giggle fest about how, you know, we like a lot of the same things. We were even sort of dressed the same on our little FaceTime call. So I can't wait to do this with her and share this knit along with you. Our goal really for the knit along is to create community and also to help those of you, especially who might be a little nervous about knit, uh, knitting mittens for the first time, especially color work mittens. Um, we wanna be there for you. We plan on having some Instagram lives where we will answer questions. We also will have a question section on our podcast pages on Ravelry and answer those questions on the live Instagram. So we're looking forward to that. We're looking forward to exploring the technology together and we're really excited about this mitten knit along. We're gonna be calling it the hashtag Summer Mitten Cal. And the two patterns that I'm looking at doing, and let me just tell you, it's gonna be June 1st through July 31st. So start gathering up your materials now, pick some patterns. I'm going to be making on Ravelry a bundle. A bundle is um, a newer thing on Ravelry where you can put different patterns into one spot and then share that with other people. So I'll pick some of my favorite patterns that I'm seeing out there. Uh, of course, I think the Nightingale, that's the pattern uh, that I shared with you on the last episode from the, oh, where is that book? From this book. Unfortunately, if you don't have the book, 
<coughs> excuse me. Unfortunately, if you don't have the book, it's not one of the patterns that is on Ravelry as one for sale, but I'm going to be doing it. And um, one unique thing to this particular pattern, I co kind of covered up the the chart here, actually got it ready for when I'm starting to work it. You'll notice that the first 30 some stitches, instead of being kind of a typical chart, kind of like this one, where you have the front of the mitten and the back of the mitten, this one you're kind of using half of the front and half of the back on one side and half of the front and half on the back of the back on the other side. So I thought this would be interesting. I've never done um, color work in this way before, but I'm looking forward to doing that particular pattern. And I shared all the details and talked a little bit about the story itself that the mitten is based on on my last podcast. So check that out. And the other mitten I found while I was just perusing Ravelry, I cannot wait to do. It's actually by Tannis um, of Tannis Fiber Arts. It's called the Sweet Nectar Mitt. And I'll put a picture of it right here. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous mitten pattern. And I think part of what makes it gorgeous is the type of yarn that was used. Um, the yarn you'll see on this picture, I love the, the speckledness and the way that the yarn, it's just very, very variegated. And um, oh, it makes that hummingbird look gorgeous. So I loved, and I loved also the fact that the front and the back are different on this particular pattern. So I think I will be doing that mitten, and I have a feeling that Denise might be doing that mitten as well. So we thought it might be kind of fun for you to see how, you know, what yarns we select and, um, and see how the two mittens turn out differently. So those are the two patterns that I'm hoping to do in June and July. We are gonna have some great prizes. We already have some amazing prizes lined up. I can't wait to share with you more on June 1st or probably my next podcast um, where we can kind of show you some more of that. But trust me, we have some great prizes. And again, if you've ever wanted to knit some color work mittens, now is the time. Denise and I want to be your support system and your inspiration people and get those mittens going because won't it be great to wear this pair of mittens that we've made in the summer that uh, will warm us in the winter. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. So please join us and uh, watch for more info on our Instagram accounts, as well as in the podcast pages on Ravelry and on our podcasts. And check out Earth Tones Girl. Denise, get to know her if you don't already know her. I highly recommend her podcast. It's a good one. Okay, finished objects. This is my really my only finished object the last couple of weeks. This is the Impressionist shawl. I did this as a mystery knit along. I'm, I'll insert some pictures here because I don't want to take it off. I'm still trying to figure out how to wear it. Uh, right now, this is my favorite way to wear it. Although, I think I like to wear it kind of as a a granny shawl better. I, I find Helen Stewart, a lot of her patterns, I think they look nicer when they're around your back and shoulders than the kerchief style that I kind of like to do with some of the others, um, the other wraps that I do. But this is kind of how I've landed on it today. <laughs> it was a great mystery knit along. If and when she does another mystery knit along, jump, do it great great patterns great support she just she does a beautiful job with her designs and as well as her um i just love the way that she puts her charts you'll see if you knit one of hers she's got this great percentage system i'm sure all of you if i'm sure many of you if not all already know this so that is my Impressionist shawl and info, different yarns I use, needle size, that kind of thing can be found on my Ravelry page, Treehouse Knits. I'm Treehouse Knits everywhere, by the way, on Instagram, Ravelry, uh, even Facebook. Sometimes I post on Facebook. Okay, some things that I'm working on. I am still working on these cub socks and I thought I'd show you my progress on them. It is a long, long, long tube that I've kind of, 
uh, wound up here so that it's easier to knit in a circle. I'll just show you how long this tube is getting. I'm going to be knitting probably to about 28 inches long, this tube. And this is, this is the pattern that, or this is the project that I'm bringing along when I'm in the car, kind of waiting for my boys to get out of school or of their activities. It's brainless. I really don't even have to look at it. I can just knit, knit, knit. And um, I still have, oh, probably about five inches to go. And I will then be breaking it in half and inserting the uh, heels and the toes using this red color. So that's the progress I wanted to share with you on that. And when I get to the point where I split, I will definitely take some pictures and maybe some video and just kind of show you how I do that. Next thing I want to show you, first of all, if my mom and dad are watching this, I'm going to let you decide if you want to watch the progress of this uh, or you want, if you want to look away. And I'll uh, leave it up to you because I'm going to be talking about something that um, you may or may not be getting down the road. So I have been kind of itching to design my own colorwork mittens. I have got, I, this always happens to me. I, I start, I knit a lot of objects and then I get to the point where I, I modify the objects and then I get to the point where, man, I would like to make my own, um, my own mitten pattern in this case. So I thought, well, what could be my inspiration for my first pattern? And I thought, well, is there a special event that's happening soon or, I don't know, a vacation or a spot? And I remembered that it's my parents' 50th wedding anniversary this year. And a while back, Patricia P4 Chen uh, and Intography on YouTube shared with her a pair of mittens that she knit for her husband in celebration of their 20th wedding anniversary and how um, she did it. I believe the red and the black red was to signify that it was a special occasion. And I just liked all of the symbolism of the mittens that she knit up. So I thought, well, why don't I see if I can come up with my own pattern? So I started to look through some motif and pattern books that I have for mittens and I looked through my Selby Vacher book as well as a um, oh the book this book right here this alternate stitch dictionary I kind of looked at a bunch of different stitch dictionaries and I picked some patterns that I liked then I did a little Google search and I knew I wanted to create some sort of chart. So I did a Google search and I found a particular program called, doo -doo -doo, where is it? I found the program called Chartminder. So I pulled that up. It's a free, um, free site really. I don't think it's a program necessarily, but it's a free site where you can make your own charts. And I grabbed, I, I filled that in with the different symbols that I wanted on the mitten and I printed it out and made the right hand mitten. Now, I had some Hillsvog Tinde in my stash. I thought I wanted to try out that yarn because it was a um, kind of a sport DK weight. And here's the mitten and I'll kind of share with you my first draft, things that I would change and things that uh, I really like. You can see I've got a little hole there, so I'll have to figure out something. To, but let me talk about the, the symbols on here first. First off, this particular color, I'm not a fan of the contrast for it. I think I want to knit the final mittens in a different colorway. I love the blue, but I think I want something a little more vibrant for the back. So I started out my mitten with the Latvian braid, and not only is it beautiful, but it's functional. It keeps the stockinette stitch from rolling up. So I did that. And then what I did is I pulled from this alternate books uh, a wave pattern. And there's smaller waves and bigger waves. And to me, that kind of symbolizes the ups and downs of 50 years of marriage, the ebb and flow of marriage. And then I did another... Um, braid. I did a left-leaning braid on the bottom and a right-leaning braid on the top just to kind of balance it out. And then I thought, well, why don't I get some initials on there? So we've got M for my mom's name and D for my dad's name. Now I think what I'll do in the pattern is kind of move them in a little bit more. And I selected a font that I thought 
kind of fit with the whole uh, mitten. And then we've got this Viking ship. That's what I'm kind of calling it. And that's just to really symbolize the journey, the journey of their 50 years together, as well as uh, my dad's background and the fact that these are kind of a Norwegian style mitten, kind of Selbu style mitten. On the top is the O, which is their last name. And I don't know if I like that particular O so much, but we're going with it. And then I put some birds on here. The bigger birds are me and my husband, and the two little birds are their grandsons, my parents' grandsons, our kids. And then on the other mitten, I'm going to do the same thing to um, indicate my brother and his wife and two sons. So that is kind of the symbolism there. And then on the back, I loved this cross pattern. I um, they have always put um, Christ first in their marriage and have a very strong faith. So I thought that would be a nice symbolism for them. And then on the thumb, maybe I'll take these off now so I can hold it flatter. On the thumb, I put the year that they got married and I'm going to obviously move those numbers a little closer together so you can read them better, but it's 1968. And then on the other mitten, I'm going to put um, 2018. So that's kind of where I am with that. I, I did this um, up the, this every other stitch on the side. Kind of looks like hearts, right? And then I did my best to continue, keep the pattern going on the thumb. And that worked out. So I think that describes the mitten. It was a great first draft. I shared with you some of the minor tweaks that I'm going to do for it. But um, boy, a lot of fun to make a mitten that kind of symbolizes something special. If you're to the point where you would like to try to do something like this, I highly suggest that you make yourself, you head over to Chartminder or another, there's other programs as well, and just kind of plot out the mitten and you can use a mitten pattern that, you, that has worked well for you in the past and just kind of use that as a template and then fill in the spaces for the different motifs that you want. But I just wanted to share that with you and encourage those of you who, you don't have to, you know, just knit a plain, the pattern that you find out there. There's some really great stitch dictionaries out there that you can pull from. This and the Selbuvader book is where I got mine from. Now we're to the section where I want to share with you some of the fun things that have come my way, fun things that um, I've been doing the last couple of weeks that are related to the fiber arts. So the first thing I wanted to share with you, actually this happened a few weeks back. Uh, some guild members of mine and I did a class that was based on a free online class that you can do by yourself all about color play. That's the name of the program and it's by Sweet Georgia. If you have not gone to Sweet Georgia's website, I think she has started a dyeing school and I think she's calling it the School of Sweet Georgia. So if you go to schoolofsweetgeorgia.com, there is a free program on color called Color Play. And it's, um, you know, when I worked in the yarn store, a lot of people would come in and say, I really like this color. I need two more colors that go with it. What should I pick? And this is a class that really can help you feel more confident to do that. In the class, she talks about color and mainly the color wheel. Talks about hue, and she talks about value, she talks about saturation, temperature. So by the end of this class, and then there's some activities that you can do to strengthen your skills in identifying uh, different um, ways that colors work together and play together. I highly recommend this. It's free. The workbook is free that you can print off and our yarn store just happened to be running the class where the yarn store actually purchased these mini skeins from Sweet Georgia for the class and we used them to create color combinations that worked well and just really learned how to use the color wheel. So check that out if that interests you. It's completely free and instead of using scraps of yarn you can use 
um, instead of using the Sweet Georgia yarn, you don't have to purchase that. You can use scraps of yarn, you can use paint chips. Um, in the class, I actually ran a class also for my guild during a guild meeting and we used markers and crayons. So check that out if you're interested. I left the class feeling a lot more confident to understand if I want to have a dramatic piece then I want to use more complementary colors or contrasting colors. If I want something a little more relaxing like in this particular um, piece the purple and the blue are complementary colors on the color wheel they're next to each other and that can create a more peaceful harmony in a project. I hope I'm making sense. Check it out. I thought some of you might be interested in that. Okay, the other thing that has come my way, I talked about it in my last episode as well. I got this month's knit crate. Now, you know, when you, I've, I don't, I don't know exactly how many subscribers I have, but I know I'm over 2,500 subscribers. And once you get over 2,000, you start to get people, um, small businesses, big businesses that want you to, they want to send you things so that you talk about them on your podcast. And I am, I'm not one to share anything with you that I wouldn't personally like or buy myself. So I have actually kind of rejected several items because I just, I don't like them. And for the most part, anything that I've shared with you, I've purchased. It's not like I'm this big podcaster who's getting a ton of stuff in the mail. But when Knit Crate, sh Knit Crate shouted out to me, I said, yeah, I would love to check out your stuff. And I have to say, I think Knit Crate is such an amazing value. And I wanted to share with you the latest Knit Crate box that I got. This is $24.99 um, retail. And I do have a code below that would get you 20% off of this. And it's I'll put it down below in the video. But this month's Knit Crate is so cool. They're it's contemporary is the theme and for $24.99 you get two skeins these are amazing this is their in-house yarn brand called Le Brebis I think I'm sure I'm saying that wrong but it's a marled sock but you could use this in any kind of um, pattern and in fact the pattern that they send for out for this is a um, it's called Daxis by Marie Cigaras, and I'll put a picture in here. Forty percent merino, forty percent Peruvian Highland, and twenty percent nylon. You get four hundred and forty yards in each skein, and this is natural. This is undyed, natural um, spun looks like a two-ply to me so this would be amazing for um, shawls and any other kind of stockinette knitwear kind of items so you get the two skeins which I don't know you go to a yarn store and this one skein would be $24 so you get the two skeins you get two patterns you get a crochet pattern and you get a really beautiful knitting pattern and then you get a bonus code as well for half off of any pattern or ebook by the designer that designed the um, the pattern for this particular knit crates and the shipping is part of the price as well so this yarn is gorgeous now don't be like me I got the box it was taped here I took a pair of scissors and I just cut well where is it <laughs> I cut through the yarn but so be careful that goes for anything you get in the mail. Be careful when you open your yarn packages. That happened to me. No big deal because we know how to weave in ends and no big deal there. But um, yeah, gorgeous. They also sent to me this month's sock crate membership. And the sock crate is less. It's less, I think it's, I want to say it's $18. I should really know. I'll put down below. But check out this colorway it's called weekend by Audine Wools and it's a luxury sock so this has some cashmere in it and I can tell it does but look at how the color is dispersed this is gonna make a really cool pair of socks this would be beautiful in a shawl as well so and again this actually comes with a pattern by Sierra Kroon called Cantalo and I'll put the pattern down here as well All right.
in here as well. So, and the month before that, I don't think I even shared with you, this, this came in the sock crate for the golden hour last month. Look at this. Can you see the sparkle in there? So I don't mean to sound like a used car salesman here, but I think this is a really good deal. And if you have any interest in Knit Crate, uh, I think you'll be really pleased with what you get and the value. So check it out again down below. I have that, that special code they sent me, use it. Uh, I do get a little portion of it and I tell you I will plug that right back into the podcast for gifts and for shipping and whatnot. So, and you might even see in future giveaways these yarns. So anyway, wanted to share that with you. Okay, so the other cool thing, another cool thing I wanted to share with you is a podcast. I've heard a few other folks out there talking about this podcast and I wanted to share it with you in case we're not listening to the same people. Um, and that is a podcast. This is an audio podcast called The History of English. It's called History of English Podcast. On their episode 110, they had an hour-long discussion on the history of wool in medieval England. It's The podcast is called Dyed in the Wool, and I honestly, I want to listen to it over and over. I think I need to take notes the next time I listen to it. It was a fascinating episode on the history in the medieval times, the importance of wool and in England, and also in the, the importance of the trading of wool for England, and the changing clothing during the time. It went from more of a tunic, loose type of clothing to a fitted type clothing, and the impact that it had on England at the time, and clothes making and also talked about words in our English language that actually derived from um, things that had to do with the processing of wool and sheep and it's amazing how ingrained that is in in our English language those particular uh, phrases and sayings that we don't even think of it being uh, a part of the wool industry and sheep but it is so if you want to kind of get away from some knitting podcasts uh, that, and you just want a little bit of a change, check out the History of English podcast, especially episode 110, Dyed in the Wool. I've always been interested in um, linguistics and language, so I'm starting this podcast from the beginning. I'm now going to start episode four, and he is going to be talking to us about the Grimm brothers and their fairy tales and how they kept a language going that otherwise would have died. And so that kind of ties right into the fairy tale mitten knitting that I've been doing and I highly recommend that podcast. Another cool thing that's come down the pike for me, I, uh, boy, about a month ago, Wool and Honey, that uh, I think of them as my local yarn store, even though they're about two and a half hours north of where I live. Um, Wool and Honey sent out a little um, ask in the Instagram world if anybody would be willing to apply to be a test knitter, or not a test knitter, a sample knitter for the store. And I, I just wanted to be part of Wool and Honey. I love that store. As you probably remember, if you've watched my podcast, I get their monthly subscription, Sleeping Bear Dunes Yarn Club. And, and so I said, yes, sure. I gave them my resume, which is my Ravelry um, name. And they came back to me this uh, past week with uh, wanting me to knit a hat in Stone Wool Cormo, that's the yarn, in the color tobacco, and the hat that I'll be doing is called Bracket. I think this hat was in the Elaine magazine, maybe uh, issue three. They just sent me the pattern yesterday. I can't wait. I'll put a picture of it here. I'm excited to do the cabling, but what I'm most excited about is using this yarn. I've been curious about this yarn for a while, so I'm excited to test it out. The Stonewool Cormo, Cormo is a beautiful breed of yarn to knit with, but it's also the way that it's spun, this particular yarn, it's a kind of a hybrid between a woolen spun and a worsted spun. So you get 
the advantage of the worsted spun strength with the woolen spun loft, which I really like in clothing, just the lightness of it, but it's still warm. So I will keep you posted and you can join me along on the journey of knitting that hat up and I'll talk a little bit about that yarn too. So I'm so excited to do that for them and be part of that, a little part of that store. Um, so look for that. Okay, so another fun thing. This past Saturday, if you follow me on Instagram, you saw a picture I posted of my guild's natural dye day that we did. We had a great day thanks to our two leaders who really got things organized with getting the dye stuffs and the yarn that we were going to dye all skeined up into mini skeins and the pots. We had a big stove that had six burners and we had six pots going and I just kind of I put in my little bin here some of the colors that we got. This color was from um, those cochineal bugs. And what was kind of funny was my friend Barbara harvested some of those bugs off of a cactus plant at her friend's home in Arizona. So we had cochineal from Mexico and we had cochineal from Arizona. So we were just kind of, we wanted to see if that would produce a different color. They're pretty close. <laughs> so that was the cochineal and then... Um, you know, as the dye is distributed or expressed, I guess, into the yarn, we did another dip and it just got a little pinker. We had fun with onion skins. And I just love that kettle dyed look of the, just a little variegation that adds such a nice depth of color. But who would have thought that onion skins would produce such a beautiful saturated color. This was marigold. And look at the the dyed and the kettle um, variegation there. A little bit different than the onion skins. A little bit uh, warmer, I guess. We played around with, we had a, a, a dye that was Saxon blue, which I guess was liquid indigo. I'm not quite sure exactly how that is created, but it did give us some really pretty blues this is um, after we took these two out, we put more yarn in and got a lighter blue. And then we started to kind of play around with dyeing it first in one color and then just dyeing it quickly in another. And we would get kind of more of a, I don't know if it's showing up here, but this is more of a turquoisey blue. We did that to get, um, this actually was taking um, the cochineal after we had pulled out this color, we dipped this, it got lighter, and then we quickly dipped it into um, Osage orange, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, like the bark of it, which the Osage orange actually produced this color, but it, then we ended up with this color, combining the two, which I love. It's kind of almost a lilac-y soft pink. And then of course we had some greens. What did we use for the greens? I'm drawing a blank. Um, but again, we had fun. This was first dipped in green and then into the leftover dye bath of the Saxon blue and it, this really pretty blue green. I mean, it was so much fun. We were all standing around these kettles, ooing and eyeing when we would pull things out. I mean, the second you put the, the yarn in and you pull it out, it's like all of the dye just sucks in and you're still left with the same amount of water and it's almost like magic, especially when you um, double dye, like you dip in one and then in another. And we all kind of chuckled, can totally tell why hundreds of years ago people might have thought we were witches because we were around all these steaming cauldrons, ooing and eyeing and having a great old time. So <laughs> I just want to share with the, uh, share that all with you. We also had some walnut and um, oh, it produced some really pretty, oh, this one is almost like a camel color. We just had so much fun. Now going forward, um, I would love to do some dyeing out of, uh, with just natural things in my backyard as well. Oh, the other thing is we played around with um, different things that would alter after the fact and one of them was iron um, and that really changed uh, items as well. It kind of dulled them up, gave them kind of more of a grayer tone. 
But going forward, I want to play around a little bit. I wanted to tell you that Wool and Honey actually has these natural dye kits. And it tells you in here, it's the cochineal matter weld and logwood. And then it has the alum that you need to kind of prep your yarn with. And it coincides, if you already have the modern natural dyer book, it coincides with the book. So if you've got the book, this is going to get you started. And I'm excited to kind of play around with that. My mother-in-law also gave me her natural dyeing book as well. And what I like about that is it shows you on each page what the changes look like if you add alum, chrome, copper, iron, or tin and how it, it changes the yarn. So that was my fun into natural dyeing. I don't know how into it I'll get, and I do want to create a pattern where I can use some of these yarns, maybe a scarf or a, um, a cowl of some sort. I have an idea I'll put right here from Plucky Knitter. And I think it'd be a really nice conversation piece to take along with me and just share, you know, this color came from this and this color came from this. So I'll let you know when I start that project too. So that was the natural dyeing day. Awesome day. Awesome day. And thanks to those leaders in our guild who helped organize that. Okay, so the final thing I have to share with you are some books that I'm reading and I'm about to read. This book. The Summer Before the War. I have a feeling some of you might like this book. I I started out, it was a little slow, and now I am, you can see how far into, I'm almost I'm two thirds of the way done, and I'm having a hard time putting it down now. This particular book, on the back, they talk about how it's sort of a Jane Austen for our day kind of book, and I have to agree, it kind of starts out slow, you get to know these characters, um, but the wit in the writing is so good and then all of a sudden you are fully involved in these people's lives and there's also the historical context. The summer before the war, the war they're talk she's talking about is World War II and it takes place in a small little town called Rye in East Sussex in the days before the Great War. I think it's just a charming really lovely book and there's knitting involved in it. They're knitting for the war and um, I think you'll really enjoy it if you pick it up. And if you like Jane Austen, the wit, um, the relationships and just strong women in the book, it's a, it's a really nice read. So I highly recommend The Summer Before the War by Helen Simonson and she actually also is the author of Major Pettigrew's Last Stand, which I think I read that a while ago, but I don't remember. Final thing I want to share with you, a fellow podcaster, she is a woolen forest on Ravelry and on Instagram. She is doing a book club and invited me to join along. I've got the book. It's already started, but you can you can jump in really at any time. Check out a woolen forest on Ravelry, uh, her Ravelry group. The book is called A Perfect Red, Empire, Espionage, and the Quest for the Color of Desire. And it is a book about... This book is the story of the search for a color, a perfect and unfading red. It is a fascinating and largely unknown story of greed, mixing fashion, folly, and ingenuity in equal measure. And Amy Butler Greenfield unravels its mysteries with all the skills of a detective. As she tells, it is the most colorful of stories written with style and verve and carries the reader along effortlessly. So it's the story of the commodity that the ancient Mex Mexicans, the Aztecs, and that cochineal monopoly that the um, Europe just wanted. You know, the Spanish conquistadors came over in the 1500s, maybe in the 1400s too. Um, not only was silver a big deal, but so was cochineal, which is the dye that I showed you a minute ago. And um, you get from that a lot of the royal reds that Europe was just dying for at the time. And I believe that's where Cardinal Red comes from, too. So I'm looking forward to reading this book and kind of catching up with that, that podcast group, A Woolen Forest, on Ravelry. Oh, I think we've made it to the end, folks. It's great seeing you. 
I'm curious what you guys are working on and I um, if you want to tell me down below I'd be curious what your plans are for summer knitting. I hope you'll consider joining Denise, Earth Tones Girl, and myself for our summer cal, which is the Summer Mitten Cal. And uh, you can find all the information over the next couple of weeks in our podcast groups as well as on Instagram. So I think that's it. Thank you so much for, if you're still with me here, thank you for watching. And thank you for the thumbs up. I really appreciate those as well as your comments below. Again, let me know what you're working on for summer knitting. And I'll see you on the next episode of Treehouse Knits. Bye.